Hey guys, Bart from TSD Industries here. I have a quick video that will show you how to install our Gen 2 F flasher relay on a Kawasaki Z400. If you've landed on this video, chances are you are plagued with a hyper flash symptom like we are here, where you're flashing faster than the 85 cycle per minute signal rate that was set by the manufacturer on the OEM signal. This is because anytime you go from an incandescent type signal, OEM signal, to LED lighting, you're gonna draw much less current from the signaling system. Now on this particular bike, we have our MEG GTR front signals, and we also have an integrated tail light. Both of these components have LEDs instead of the incandescent light bulbs. So we are in fact flashing faster than the 85 cycle per minute rate. So what to do about that? We do have a plug and play replacement for your OEM relay. This is our Gen 2F relay. Plugs right in, it comes preset to 85 cycles per minute. No matter what kind of signals you have, whether you have a mix of OEM and rear LED or all LED signals, it doesn't matter. It'll just set one flash rate for all the signals. Front, rear, left, right, all of this will be controlled by this one little box and it's a direct plug and play component the OEM component lives under this panel. In just a minute, I will show you how to change your OEM signal relay to this relay. One thing I wanna to touch on real quick before we start the installation, this is an adjustable uh, component. If you slip this gray cover off, you can fine tune the flash rate if you choose to go away from the 85 cycle per minute rate. I typically don't do that but we did work in that adjustability in case some of you guys do want to fine tune it. So I'll also show you how to adjust the flash rate. All right, let's power down and start wrenching. Okay, so in step one, we will be using a four millimeter Allen key to remove this fastener up here. When you extract it, there is a small plastic washer that goes with it. Please retain it and reuse it upon reassembly. Now we have three rivet type plastic fasteners. You push in the center to get them unlocked and extract them. And then you can reset them and get them ready for reinsertion. And now we will unlock this panel from its captive fasteners. There, there's a series of peg type fasteners that go into rubber grommets. We just need to dislodge them. We won't actually remove the entire panel off the bike. We just need enough access to get in here and slip off your OEM relay. It does have a rubber, rubber uh, captive system that goes on this steel tab. And then we just grasp the plug that goes into the relay and slip it off. And as you can see, we have the same style connector on our relay. So you just replace that. There's only one way to plug it in. And before we go any further, I like to test our system and make sure we're flashing appropriate rate. And in fact, we are. In case you do wanna change your flash rate, Here's what I like to do. Using a tiny flathead screwdriver, we will pry up on the gray portions of the locking mechanism against the blue cap. And that enables you to extract the cap and the circuit board. We will plug that back in. Now make sure that the bike is powered down. When you pop that back in here, you will need to ensure that none of these contacts touch anything that can be grounded here. You can short out this board and make it inoperable. So definitely make sure you're holding this away from all the other components and then have access to this potentiometer that will take a really tiny Phillips screwdriver and we will power up the signals, power up the bike, power up the signals and rotating, rotating one way here. Clockwise slows it down. And you can get it down to a pretty ridiculous slow pace. Counterclockwise will speed it up and you can have a light switch rave going. So it'll be up to you at this point to set it to 
the rate that you like. I like this right here. This looks good to me. Power down the bike, replace the cap. Now on the cap itself, there is a channel that accepts your circuit board. So you make sure that you get that around the circuit board and then you'll pop it on. It'll make an audible noise. And then the rear hanging bracket here will go around this tab. Now on this particular bike, there is no separate hanging component. It is integrated into your OEM relay. You can't really reuse it. So what I suggest is that you can use a wire tie to get around the back bracket and then also around that tab that hangs out here that accepts the OEM setup. Now what I'm gonna wanna do is sandwich my wire tie on the front side of this bracket and then get it around the back and get it zipped. The steel bracket is T-shaped, so once you get this cinched around the whole assembly here, it won't have the ability to slide off towards the top because it does have interference there. A little bit cumbersome working in here, but that's essentially it. I'll cut the excess off the zip tie and then we'll be ready to reassemble. So we just need to make sure that all these friction fasteners that fit in the grommets end up back in their place, push it all in towards the inboard side of the bike, replace your rivet fasteners. They just go in once you've reset them to this configuration. They go in and you snap in the center and it's good to go. That's pretty much it. We'll fasten the top with that four millimeter Allen head screw. This does go into a rubber well nut, so it won't have a hard bottom. You just get it down until you have friction and that's pretty much it. Boom. Signals are flashing at a nice comfortable rate. They're not hyper flashing anymore. It's a really nice upgrade that doesn't cost you a lot of time and it doesn't cost you a lot of money and it's all plug and play. So if you guys like what you see here, check out tstindustries.com where you'll find the relay, the signals, the integrated taillight and a whole host of other parts. See you there.